Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 8, part 2b, the cardiac cycle. Now, I will assume that you are familiar with all the structures and all the chambers and all the valves of the heart, um, vessels included. And if you are not familiar yet with the names, I, I suggest you go back and familiarize yourself because um, if you do not know the names, then you are going to be very confused. So, um, now let's go straight into the cardiac cycle. Now, your normal heart rate is around 75 beats per minute. This is just the average heart rate. It could be slower than that or faster than that, around 60 to 80 actually. So, this is just the average resting heart rate. So, when you're not exercising, we usually use the units BPM, so 75 BPM. So, if you take that, <clears throat> if you take that min one minute, which is 60 seconds divided by 75 beats, you'll get 0.8. Okay, 60 seconds divided by 75 beats is 0.8 seconds. And every beat is actually one cardiac cycle. So what happens at one cardiac cycle? There are three stages here you must remember. Atrial systole, ventricular systole, and diastole. What does that mean? Systole means contraction. Okay, and diastole means relaxation. Systole, when it says contraction, so when atrial systole, when, when we say atrial systole, we mean that the atria contracts. And then the second stage is the ventricles contract, ventricular systole. And diastole is the whole heart relaxing. So if you could pull up your hands like this, okay, and okay like this and this is the atria and this is the ventricles okay so you can imagine that the atria contract okay and next and the ventricles relax in ventricular systole the ventricles contract and the atria relaxes and in diastole both of them relax so that is one cardiac cycle so atrial contract then ventricle contract and then diastole so they take turns, okay, the atria and ventricle take turns to contract, and then there is diastole. So let's keep that in mind as we go along. This is a GIF, oh, why is my GIF not working here? That, that, these are GIFs to show you what actually is going on when you were doing your hands. This is atrial, oh, it's going really fast. And every time it strings, that is actually ventricular systole. So that's really quickly. So let's analyze each and every phase, and you need to know everything in this table. So yeah, um, let's just analyze each stage in detail one by one. So let's go atrial systole row by row. So it's very short. It's just zero point one seconds, and you can see how fast this is beating here. Zero point one seconds. What happens? Atria contract and ventricles is relaxing. The valves that are open obviously, is atrial ventricular valve. So you're thinking of your tricuspid and your bicuspid valves here. Um, they are open due to the contraction of the atria and blood can form flow from the atria into the ventricles. Atria is the plural of atrium, by the way. Now, valves that are closed during this um, phase would be the valves in the vena cava and the pulmonary veins or you can just say the valve in veins and of course the semilunar valves inside the uh, pulmonary um, artery and aorta as well so that's atrial systole it makes sense if you can imagine it you can answer it so ventricle systole here is actually a little bit uh, longer is 0 0.3 seconds and because this is called ventricular systole, ventricles are the ones that are contracting. Atria is relaxed and what happens is um, the semilunar valves would open. Okay, at first it's not open yet, it just closes off and then the pressure builds and therefore it opens. You can see the blood flowing from the ventricles to the, to the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Okay, and obviously the blood going out from the pulmonary artery will end up in the lungs and the blood going out from the aorta will go to the rest of the body. 
Valves that are closed here are atrial ventricular valves, as you can see right here. Ignore that one first, we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, and the last phase we have diastole. So this is the relaxation phase. Nothing is contracting, atrials feel relaxed. And what happens is the valves in the vena cava and the pulmonary veins um, are open and the blood starts filling um, the atria and sort of trickles into ventricles a little bit but not a lot yet because it's not atrial systole yet. It's just passively trickling into the ventricles. And in this uh, phase, semilunar valves close, are close here. And this produces a dub sound. So you can see here, lup dub, and what does that mean? I'm just going to play a little clip for you. I hope you can hear it. So that's the sound of your heart beating. Let's do that again. So that's the sound of your heart beating. And you can hear it. And that is the sound we call lap dap, lap dap, lap dap. Yeah, I know you don't it sounds like boop, but I'm not pretty I don't know why scientists call it locked up. But anyway, the first sound here is actually the sound of the atrial ventricular valves closing. So the sound is produced by the closing of valves. And then the dub sound comes from the semilunar valves closing. Isn't that fascinating? So when you next time you hear the, the, the heartbeat sounds in Korean dramas, when you're procrastinating or something, always think about valves closing. Again, the first sound is atrial ventricular valves closing, and the second sound is the semilunar valves closing. Now, why are they closing? Actually, this is due to differences in pressure of atrial ventriculars and arteries, which directly cause valves to open and close. So, if um, a certain chamber has a higher pressure than the other, then the valve will open, or if it is not in the right direction, then the valve will close. Now you can see these atrial ventricular valves here. So let's do it stage by stage again. Let's look at atrial systole. What happens again? Atria contract, ventricles are in a relaxed stage. And during this stage, because atria is contracting, this means atrial pressure is higher than ventricular pressure, right? Ventricular pressure is very low compared to atrial pressure, but because blood is flowing in, the pressure would slightly increase. Okay. Whereas the pressure in arteries um, are high because it used to be diastole, right? Uh, but it's slowly decreasing as it flows to the entire body. It is not com it is not no contraction in the arteries, you know, that's not something that contracts, but anywhere that has a lot of blood would have high pressure. Let's look at ventricular systole now. In ventricular systole, ventricles contract, so these areas contract and atria relax. And because atria has a much lower pressure than ventricle pressure this time, this will cause the AV valves to close. AV's atrial ventricular valves, right? These would close. And because ventricular pressure um, is high, right? This would also cause, or oh, this, right here, but because ventricular pressure is high, it would also cause the semilunar valves to open. It is and it's um and the pressure will be rapidly increasing in both the ventricles and arteries as blood is pumped through the aorta okay so that is pressure in the ventricular system now let's just talk about diastole diastole is when everything relaxes right so when everything is relaxing you shouldn't have much pressure so you can expect that the atria and the ventricles have a lower pressure compared to systole um, but it's increasing because blood is filling the heart whereas in the arteries because ventricular systole is just over Okay, it means the pressure that is still high because it is um, slowly 
the blood is flowing to the entire body, but it still has a lot of blood in those arteries. So the arteries is never really empty of blood. You can see here, the arteries pressure is always high, but whether it's increasing or decreasing, it matters, right? Decreasing, increasing, and decreasing again. Okay, so let's read it um, row by row, and maybe it will make some sense that way and help you organize your thoughts as well. So let's look at atrial pressure in the row. So atrial pressure will increase when the atrial contracts, and that will cause the AV valves to open. Yeah, and also think about the valves and the veins that close. Yeah, but other than that, it's pretty low. Ventricular pressure, on the other hand, will be quite low in atrial systole, but very high during ventricular systole, as expected, isn't it? When the ventricle is contracting, then ventricular pressure is high. And then during diastole, is lower. Pressure in arteries are usually high in general, but um, because no blood is sort of pumped during the atrial systole. It is high but slowly decreasing. Ventricular systole is high and rapidly increasing because blood is being pumped into the aorta. And in diastole, it's high but it's slowly decreasing again due to um, a lot of blood inside, but it is also flowing to the entire body. It is still larger than ventricular pressure though because at this time the ventricles are relaxed and it's slowly feeling with a little bit of blood only so um in general okay the changes in blood pressure in the atrial ventricles and arteries changes with the stage of the cardiac cycle um, usually, we measure the pressure on the left side of the heart because it is stronger, left atrium, left ventricle, and the aorta. And this is due to higher pressure and larger difference in pressure compared to the right side, as we said just now. Now again, um, I will show you a graph of the left side of the heart in a second. But generally speaking, atrial pressure is relatively low because it has thinner walls and less force compared to um, the ventricles okay, and the arteries. Atrial pressure will increase during atrial systole in general. Ventricular pressure will increase during ventricle systole, which makes sense. And aortic pressure increases also during ventricle systole because the blood is pumped through the aorta. So keeping all these general ideas in mind, as well as the table, um, let's look at this graph. So this is everything we said in the table and everything we said in the previous slide, but in graphical form. Okay, let's look at this form. Uh, let's look at this graph in a closer look. So this here is the atrial pressure. You can see it's relatively low compared to the ventricular pressure that goes like huge, huge difference, and the aortic pressure here, different. You can see here that uh, that this this atrial pressure increases slightly, and that is because this is atrial systole. You can draw two lines here. Okay, and at the end of atrial systole and at the beginning of ventricle systole, AV valves will close. Okay, so when ventricle systole kicks in and the ventricle pressure increases crazily, yeah, because of the ventricle contract, the AV valves will close first and then the semilunar valves will open shortly after. And you can see the aortic pressure increase due to the blood that flows in. Then you can see when ventricular pressure starts dropping and ventricle systole ends, the semilunar valves will close. Okay, so this is where the line is drawn and diastole starts. Now once the semilunar valves close shortly after the AV valves will open so that the atria is filled with blood as well as the ventricles. So this is something you should be memorizing or understanding okay why is there another line here that's because at this point onwards this is the start of the next cardiac cycle and this here is the atrial systole all over again 
remember it's a cycle means it goes from atrial ventricles atrial systole ventricle systole diastole and then back to atrial systole and then it continues and continues 0 0.8 seconds per cardiac cycle guys a lot of things goes on in 0 0.8 seconds again atrial systole is 0 0.1 seconds long so you can see here it's quite short ventricle systole is 0 0.3 seconds long and diastole is 0 0.4 seconds long and is the longest stage among the three. Let's take a closer look um, with the heart sounds. If you will draw the sounds here, you can see that the heart sounds occur when the AV valves close, lock, and then when the semilunar valves close, there's a second sound, dub. So let's do this again, but now with numbers and pictures so you can get a better idea of what is going on. Let's look at the atrial system beginning. Why is it increasing? Because atrial contraction begins. You can see the color of the one, it corresponds to the graph I'm talking about. You can see here that the ventricles are also, and uh, the ventricle pressure is also um, increasing and that's because blood is entering the ventricles during atrial systole. So you can imagine this heart here, this incident here going on, incident event. Okay, number three. Number three is when ventricle systole begins and you can see that um, the ventricles are contracting and increasing in pressure crazily here and at this point the AV valves will close. Number four, ventricles contract and therefore um, it actually started contracting here already so AV valves immediately close first and then it contracts some more because as you know, ventricular wall, walls have a thicker, much thicker wall compared to atrial walls so it can exert a lot of pressure. Yeah, And then finally, uh, the pressure will increase until a certain point that it is more than the aortic, pre aortic pressure. So at this point here, when it surpasses the aortic pressure, the semilunar valves will open and the blood flows into the arteries, causing the aortic pressure to increase as well. So you can see that the aortic pressure is increasing just right after what right after the semilunar valves open. Then after that, the semilunar valves sort of close um, at number six here. And that's the end of ventricular system. Uh, ventricles will empty and relax starting from this point onwards. Ventricles empty means empty the blood into the arteries, yeah, to aorta in this case. Okay, after that, it decreases in pressure, and then at number eight here, AV valves would open because. Um, the blood is starting to fill the atria and it's just trickling through but it's a very relaxed stage. Um, nothing is going on right here. See, um, ventricle pressure is very low here but it's slowly increasing because blood is trickling in. So let's talk about these two bumps here because you definitely asked me why is this bump here and why is this bump here. Now that is because the valves close and the pressure would slightly increase a little bit. It's like when you close the door and you jump a little bit. I'm kidding. I mean when you close, when, when um, the door is closed, you feel like it's more um, enclosed suddenly and means the pressure it would increase. I hope that makes sense. Anyways. So we'll just leave that at that. They never ask about um, this point at all, usually. So we just assume it's not there most of the time. So um, let's talk a little bit about ventricular volume as well in atrial system, ventricle system, diastole. This is just a different colored graph, but exactly the same graph you can see here. There's atrial system, ventricle system, and diastole. Okay. Um, and what happens during in ventricular volume in the same timeline is that it is uh, very high when it is not contracting, but during ventricular systole, it decreases a lot, and during diastole, it increases back again. And this is inversely proportional, means um, not proportional. <laughs> 
with the ventricular pressure. Okay, so when ventricular pressure is low, the ventricular volume is high. Ventricular pressure high, then the ventricular volume will be low. Okay, the rest is the same idea. Okay, so that is in the heart, right? So you have the left side of the heart, you have the aortic pressure, the, the ventricles and the atrial pressure, right? But oh, how about the blood vessels? And you can see here, you have seen this graph before in previous um, um, slides, but I just want you to uh, realize that this is the aorta, starts with the aorta, elastic matrix and on, and this is what we call a pulsating curve, right? A pulse pressure. And, and we say that the pressure pulsates due to ventricular contraction inside the arteries. Yeah, when ventricles are contracting, so during ventricular systole, the, the blood goes into the aorta. So there is a huge increase in the pressure in aorta. But when the ventricle relaxes, the blood goes to the rest of the body. So it sort of drops. But then before it drops completely, obviously, the ventricular systole occurs again. Therefore, it's high, it's back to low. Then ventricular systole, diastole, ventricular systole, diastole, ventricular systole, diastole. And you realize that this sort of fluctuates okay and when we call what we call this maximum pressure in the arteries is called systolic pressure because systolic pressure is con like referring to ventricle systole here and diastolic pressure is the minimum blood pressure in the arteries because that is when the uh, heart is relaxed and the pressure is at the minimum so ventricle systole distal so systolic pressure diastolic pressure human pre blood pressure okay is usually between 80 and 120 um milli this is how we measure pressure in in the vessels yeah mmhg which is millimeters mercury 80 millimeters in mercury is um the pressure diastolic pressure and 120 millimeters in mercury is the systolic pressure and when you read a normal blood pressure, this is, looks exactly like the blood pressure machine I have at home. They usually would um, measure pressure at the left hand side of your arm, right left arm above um, your elbow because that's the same level as your heart and um, it is probable that it is around the same pressure. Well, the nearest and the most convenient place and the most accurate at least. So yeah, that is systolic and diastolic pressure. And we are at the end of this video now, but I just wanted to introduce you um, to note templates just in case you didn't hear about it. These parts here could be um, quite, a, takes a while to get your head around it. So um, for extra practice, so this is entirely your choice, but if you go to the channels number one slides and you click on files you should see here that there is the slides okay which i had a little update yesterday um and you can see here that there is note template in a document format for you to print or for you just to fill in um what happens at each to really get your head around it um this part this last row here will be briefed but we will be taught next video next week um, whereas uh, the rest you can fill in already. There is also a mark scheme here, note template MS, uh, which shows you what should be in each column, uh, each row, uh, but you know what, you can refer to notes and it's almost the same anyway. So yeah, that's it for me. I hope that was clear enough. See you next video. Bye.